Hi, I'm Kyle with DIY Auto Homeschool, and today we're going to take a look at the question, how does an alternator work? And I'm going to do my best to just simplify this down so that pretty much anybody can understand it. Uh, you can really complicate the processes that go on when an alternator is charging, uh, but we're just going to kind of cut it down to the very basics and the very general look at how an alternator charges so that you can have a good understanding of what's going on inside that alternator. Now, I know I'm real bad about it, but before I can explain exactly how an alternator works, there's something that you have to understand first, and it's part of what electromagnetism is. Um, electromagnetism is actually uh, an area of physics and it's much, much, much more in-depth and complicated than what we're going to look at in relationship to an alternator. And there's only two main statements or uh, interactions between electricity and magnetism that we're going to look at to relate it to an alternator. The first being that a current traveling through a wire will create a magnetic field outside of that wire and that magnetic field, the direction of that magnetic field will be uh, related to the direction that the current is flowing through the wire. Inversely, a magnetic field moving across or through a conductor, in, in this case a wire, will generate or induce a current inside that wire. So we have basically two sides of the same coin we're looking at with electromagnetism is that with electricity you can create a magnetic field and with a magnetic field you can create electricity. Those two things are going to be very important when we look at how an alternator charges the, or runs a charging system, charges the battery and supports the electrical load of a vehicle. So I'll get the board switched over and we'll look at what an alternator does exactly. Okay, so we've got uh, the basic parts of the alternator lined out here, and we're going to walk real quickly through what they're called, where they're at, and what they do. And we'll apply the knowledge of that we just picked up on electromagnetism to their operation. First, we have the rotor, and the rotor is the part of the alternator that's actually connected to the pulley. So whenever the engine's running and the pulley is spinning on the alternator, the rotor is what's actually moving inside the alternator. Now, the rotor does move, but it does not touch the stator, but it sits fully inside the stator. So it doesn't touch it, but it sits back inside of it. Uh, and that's very important to the operation of the alternator, and we'll explain why, and you'll understand why in just a moment. Now, the stator sits, as I said, around the rotor, and it sits against the housing of the alternator, and it has typically three legs that come off of it, and go to our bridge rectifier or our rectifier. So there's a lot of different control devices and ways they control the current flowing through the rotor because you do need some electricity to start this process. Um, one of the many reasons you have a battery in your vehicle in addition to actually starting it. But you do need electricity to get this whole process started. So like I said, there's a lot of different control systems behind it, so we're not going to pin it down to one specific way. It's done. It's been done a lot of different ways throughout history, and most people are down to computer-controlled alternators now. But this rotor inside of it is a coil. It's a single coil, and it is controlled by... Uh, well, okay, the power is given to it by whatever its control device is. And... So what we're going to look at here is it's given power, it's given ground, and that coil will then do the first thing we talked about in electromagnetism is when you run a current through a wire, which this is a coil, it's just a while wire looped over and over and over and over and over inside, you're going to generate a magnetic field around that wire. Now, with that coil being looped many, 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 many times over, you're going to create a stronger magnetic field. So, it's not going to be just a very weak magnetic field like you might have in any small wire carrying a small current. Even though this doesn't carry much current, it's going to create a larger magnetic field because that current runs through the loops of the coil over and over and over and over. So, with this turned on, you have a magnet. 
Now, we've taken the first process that we talked about where, like I said, you have the current running through a wire and it creates a magnetic field outside of the wire. So, we're going to take that and we're going to stick it right here and we know once that is on, this is now a magnet that is rotated by the engine whenever the engine's running. So, now take this magnet and stick it back inside the stator and the engine's running and you have a magnet turning in a circle inside of the stator continuously. Now let's look at what the stator is. The stator is three coils separate from each other made into this whole housing right here. So you have three different segments in here, three coils that they don't touch each other, they're completely insulated from each other um, and they have leads that come off and they go to your rectifier. So now we can look at the second part of what we learned on electromagnetism and that says whenever you have a magnetic field running across or through a conductor you will generate a current inside that conductor. So we know we have a magnet and we just stuck it back inside a coil which is just a wire looped over and over and over and over and we're turning it with the engine. So we have a magnetic field constantly traveling through all of the wires in this coil generating current as they do. Now current generated in this form is not direct current voltage, it's not DC, it's AC which is alternating current and to use it in your vehicle you have to have DC so those three legs come over to the bridge rectifier or the rectifier whatever uh, it's called on the manufacturer you're looking at but the operation of this is to take that AC voltage and turn it into DC voltage and that's what we're going to take a closer look at next so just to do a quick review the first process we talked about uh, current running through a wire will create a magnetic field turns this coil into a big magnet that's being turned by the engine that magnet sits back inside the stator which is another set of three coils and we look at the second step where a magnetic field passing through a conductor or a wire will generate a current inside that wire or induce a current inside that wire. So we've taken the small current, the amount of electricity that we're using to turn this into a magnet and we've stuck it back inside the stator and we spun it around using the power from the engine and now we've generated more current because we've used the power from the engine. This isn't something where if we're just magically getting more current than we put in. We are, you have to factor in the fact that it's using the power from the engine to generate this. So, that process is down. Let's look at how we take the AC current and we turn it into DC current. Okay, so this is where it gets a little more complicated. Um, I'm still going to just cut this down to the very basics. Know that all of the processes that go on here and, and the full explanation of how these diodes work in this circuit uh, is a little more complicated than I'm going to make it sound here. And when we get to the video in the uh, advanced ser series on going through every single step of the way how the alternator works and breaking that all down, uh, we'll get more in depth. But this is just so you have a, a real basic understanding of what the alternator is doing with this AC voltage to turn it into the DC voltage that you use in your vehicle. So here these represent the voltage coming into this rectifier from each of those legs of the stator. Uh, the center line here is our zero volt line and you'll see very very simply AC voltage is uh, or AC voltage is alternating, it goes high voltage and then it switches and it goes down to low voltage or negative voltage, it goes down below the zero line. So that's what this is, that's it alternates high, low, high, low. So when we put a diode in here, a diode for simplest, simplest explanation, it restricts the flow of electricity in one direction. So when we put this diode in here which is positively biased it does uh, a process called half wave rectification it 
basically it cuts off half of the wave because it does not allow the negative voltage to go through or the low voltage to go through it's got the high side to go that it does allow to pass through what we get on the other side is a wire that has pumps of positive voltage on it so this wire can essentially come out of the rectifier and go to the output wire for the alternator because the only thing that will be on this wire is positive voltage and inversely when we have a negatively biased diode in line with this it does the same thing it's half wave rectification only in this case because it's biased the other direction it's going to block the positive voltage and it's going to allow these low humps to go through but it will allow none of the positive voltage to go through the only one that will allow the positive voltage to go through is the positively biased diode on this wire. So, one of these diodes goes onto each of the legs of, that come out of the stator. So you have one that allows the positive voltage to go through, one that allows the negative or the low side of the voltage to go through and is grounded out. So, essentially what you get is we run this side down to a ground, and we run this side to our positive output. We have taken the AC voltage and we have cut the negative voltage off on one direction and we've run it out to the charge wire and we've cut the positive side off and we've run it out to the ground wire on the other side. So you essentially take the high and low voltage and you rip it apart. You send the high one, side, one way, you send the low the other way. Now this is done three times uh, because you have those three phases or three wires that are coming out of the stator. So when you get to your actual charge wire, it's not going to just look like hump, space, hump. Because there's three, it's going to be spaced a little bit more like this. You're still going to have a little bit of a ripple in there and it's usually cleaned up pretty well, but that's what that's one of the purposes that the battery serves because the battery acts as kind of a buffer. It charges the battery uh, and this voltage is smoothed out as it goes through the battery. Uh, I know this last step was a little more complicated uh, so but I hope you really kind of understand the process we walk through how we take the, uh, the two areas of electromagnetism that we took into consideration and we use the low current to create a magnet that the engine will turn inside of the coils on the stator to generate this AC voltage which is then cut in half both ways to the high side and low side you've got your positive voltage and you've got your ground here I did my best to kind of simplify this so that you can understand it uh, for the people that just want to have a good basic understanding of how the alternator works uh, Stay tuned for our next video and uh, hope to see you then. Every time. Every time I lose my marker. It's in my pocket.